there, event marketers. Jessica Heasley here. Welcome to another episode of EM All Access, where we connect you with some of the industry's most innovative events and the marketers behind them. Today's episode is sponsored by GES, a global full service provider of live events. And it focuses on cross-pollinating B2B and B2C. The line between the two types of events is dissolving, as marketers use the best of each to influence each other. Today's B2B events are created with the flair and excitement of consumer engagement. And more and more consumer programs are being designed with the content focus and sales driving principles of B2B programs. I spoke with GES Chief Creative Officer Eddie Newquist and Senior Vice President Dan Hilbert about the trend. Let's listen in. B2B events and B2C events have traditionally been very disconnected. Why do you think that is? Long before you know, we all sat here, the idea of being a brand manager was really the gold standard. Being a brand manager at its core was consumer face facing. But you still had this B2B environment that was happening on the side. So naturally, right, there was nobody really thinking about the two. And I think the industry just continued to go that way um, you know, over years and decades. But now that we know that um, imagination and inspiration can come from anywhere, there are only a few um, organizations, brands, and agencies that have really understood and gotten that the two should, should never be separated. In today's age, you know, we're all consumers, and we all have our own broadcasting networks in our pockets. And so it's probably safest to treat everybody, because we're all consumers, treat everybody almost like a consumer, even if it's a business relationship you've had for a long time or if it's a B2B event, still treat them with the same care and, and make sure that your event is uh, entertaining, educational, and engaging. And if you do that, whether it's a B2C event or a B2B event, then, then you're going to be much better off than if you don't do those things. Are there some B2B experiences or elements that can be injected into B2C and vice versa? What comes to mind when you think about things that um, they can borrow from one another? Uh, I mean, the idea of play, right, between the, the, the two is, is very natural, right? The idea of engaging and having fun and experiencing either a brand's product or uh, a customer's product, whatever it may be, play and the idea of having fun is absolutely one one idea and emotionally very powerful that crosses the the two areas yeah i mean it's it's cool today to be a fanatic about something whether it's your iphone or or another phone or um whether it's your favorite tv show or whether it's a brand or a company that you follow it that's cool it wasn't always cool to be that nerdy um, I know because I grew up that way, um, but but the bottom line is, we, we if you're in business, you want fans, you want fanatics, just like Apple, just like Disney, just like you know some of the major major consumer products that most people think of. And so, if you can instill some of that fanaticism in your event um, by celebrating your brand or celebrating your company or your new product launch, uh, and there's a lot of great case studies out there to look at, um, if you can instill that sort of fanaticism into you know, your attendees, then uh, you're going to have a home run. And you're going to absolutely um, be memorable to the people who attend. And hopefully, if all goes well, they'll be blogging and, you know, posting pics and, and talking about how great the event was and what's new and exciting about your company or your offering. That, that really is the ultimate goal of these types of live experiences. It's very different. It's very unique. And, um, and you really want to maximize that time. The reason that Eddie and I are sitting here, right, is... For GES in particular, we have the advantage of having both sides of the brain, right? Let's not divide it between consumer and, and B2B, right? But it is both sides of the brain. There is a very pragmatic, right, when it comes to execution, budget management, and a very creative side that both bring, right? I mean, we sit with clients and we share not our corporate event piece, even though they're corporate event clients, we share everything. And they're blown away. They're blown away by the inspiration and our availability and access to all this other imagination that we do with Harry Potter and Avatar. And they understand very, very, very quickly 
that all that inspiration can be applied to their events. You don't have to do a lot of selling when it comes to that. Um, they get it. Um, because I think at the end of the day, it's all about the engagement piece and being very, very emotional. And the results. I mean, the results show it. That, that, that people who are treated that way come out more inspired about a company or more inspired about a product. Um, if, if you do a little storytelling, if you sprinkle a little magic on some things, you're not, everybody doesn't have to be a theme park and everything doesn't have to be an attraction, but you got to treat people great, really, regardless. And, and we've learned how to do that and we've learned how to create memorable experiences and, uh, and we love what we do. Does it involve when you sit down for discovery or when you sit down to put that strategy together for your clients, does it involve just releasing that whole idea of there being a B2B and a B2C side all together and just thinking about it as one human experience? How do you go into that? How do you approach it? You know, we, when, when we have visioning sessions, and we have all sorts of different types of brainstorming sessions and visioning sessions, but, you know, I like to go, I like to try to get to the raw emotion of why you're doing an event in the first place. What, what are you really trying to achieve? What does it mean to the attendees? And I remember one particular uh, very buttoned up event with a lot of, um, with a lot of senior business people that we turned into a superhero party. And it dawned on us and the client that all of these people kind of feel like they're superheroes. So let's just go all the way, put them on a pedestal, celebrate their achievements, have a lot of fun and give them something to talk about. And it worked beautifully. So I think that, that again, you, you have to kind of ban the bazookas and be able to throw out a lot of ideas, but you also have to get to the emotional context of what this truly means because everybody's busy. And if you're gonna get in a car or a plane and travel a great distance and commit your time to go to an event and perhaps sit through sessions, you wanna make sure you're gonna get something out of it. And, and that's where we can really help. Yeah. and. You know, it's interesting, Eddie's example, right? I'm sure there was some, and we know there was some selling to it, right? Because it took them out of the comfort zone, yeah. et cetera. And we get the question a lot, right? Well, how do you convince your clients to change the way they think with these very, very creative ideas? Well, usually what has happened is we forgot, they forgot, together we forgot who the guest was the end of the day. Whenever that question comes up and you find yourself in that situation where we can't transform what is a static, you know, very binary event to something truly awesome, it's usually when you forget about the guest who is actually yeah. attending. And in that case, it's as simple as reminding the team about who that guest is. Every B2B event is attended by consumers. And all consumer event attendees are buyers who need to be informed about products and services. It just makes sense that the industry would begin to fuse the two types of formerly disconnected events into one more powerful model. I'd like to thank Eddie and Dan for joining me and you for watching. Learn more about this episode's sponsor, GES, at GES.com. And explore our growing library of EML Access conversations and behind-the-scenes tours at eventmarketer.com.